the Industry Insider is only available at Promo Corner, the leader in digital marketing for the promotional products industry. Each Monday, they discuss, dissect, and debate a single issue impacting the world of promotional marketing from every industry perspective. Now, it's time for Promo Corner's Industry Insider. Welcome to another edition of the Industry Insider, <laughs> promotional products podcast where you can get all the nerdy news you need to know about. My name is Jeff Franklin, National Accounts Manager with Headwear USA. I'm joined today by three other lovely folks, but look, this fine broadcast is being brought to you today by uh, the one and only promo show. All right. Promoshow.com. All right. Look, they, uh, they're hosting fan favorite theme show, uh, us made, uh, this virtual event, uh, is going to be held on Tuesday, April 27th from 11 to three Eastern standard time. Distributors can register by clicking on the USA made banner at promoshow.com and suppliers can reach out to sales at promoshow.com. If they've, uh, if you're interested in reserving a space or a booth, uh, there's going to be education, entertainment, giveaways throughout the day. So be sure to check them out uh, on April 27th between 11 and 3 Eastern. Uh, again, go distributors, go to promoshow.com and click on the USA Made banner uh, to register and suppliers reach out to sales at promoshow or promocorner.com if you're interested in a booth. Uh, promoshow.com, the entire industry virtually. Uh, so again, uh, I'm Jeff Franklin, National Accounts Manager with Hidware USA. Why don't we say hi to Meg Erber with SNS Activewear? Big Meg, what's up? How you doing? What is up, guys? It is freezing here in New Jersey. Like it was so warm a couple of weeks ago, and now it's because so the cold. rain. I yeah. know. Yeah. Cold front came in. And I got my hair done last night. You know. Look, it's it's better than April first, though, right? We're not. It's not 26 degrees outside. It's like yeah. 50, so. Uh, I'll take that over the 26 <laughs> any day. Or 70. Steve McFadden perfectly chimed in. Thank you. Uh, with perfect promotions and more. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Recovering. I had a little bit of a cold, I think, from all the allergies the last couple of days. So I'll have the deep voice. It'll be deep for Steve today. So yeah, allergies have been kicking my ass, not gonna lie. Uh, I am I am definitely zertacking up. I should own stock. Uh, I'll just put it that way. Joined today by special guest Dan Piggott with uh, Soapbox. How are you doing, sir? Promo Soapbox. Not sure I could be better. I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah, you look nice. good, man. Nice to be glad to, glad to see you. I'm used to seeing you at, uh, you know, the regional trade shows, but, uh, you know, we, I haven't really been to one in a minute. So uh, <laughs> well, it's nice to see you on, at least on camera. I'm happy to be here. Thanks. Yeah. So look, it's uh, it's sort of customary for us to, to give our special guest a good three to four minutes to introduce yourself and tell us all things Dan Piggott. So uh, a good place to start is typically how you got introduced to the industry and what you've been up to since. So take it away, Dan. Well, okay. Thank you. And thanks again for the opportunity to uh, join you guys today. We, I, uh, I'm kind of a promo products lifer, really, uh, for the most part. I mean, uh, started the industry when I was 25 years old. Um, it's my 32nd year, so do the math yourself. But, uh, you know, I, I took a job out of college with a savings bank in New York, uh, working in New Jersey, but uh, as a mortgage rep for a savings bank. And I was in the mortgage business for about three and a half years and uh, sort of didn't like it, whatever, and was looking for my next path and just sending out resumes and answering ads. And one of the ads I, I answered was just said marketing rep. And I went and met a guy and he was a multi-line rep of all things, which I had never heard of the industry. I'd never heard of anything. And, and I, I meet the guy uh, and I, you know, I say to him, I say, do you, you sell yo-yos for a living? This is what you do, right? And he's, <laughs> and he's busy telling me that, you know, he's got all this real estate, uh, you know, transactions going on and he's talking a big game. And I'm like, I come back to the yo-yo question. I'm just like, <laughs> Yo yo, so this is what you so anyway. Um, I ended up working for him. I took took a job sort of as a sub rep, as a multi-line rep. And that was my first introduction to the industry. So people always say to me, you know, were you a distributor or a supplier? I said, How about neither? You know. And uh, so I worked for this guy for just about four years. That's kind of a long story, but I, I felt like I needed to branch out on my own. And in 1992, I started my own rep agency and kept that going, had some really great lines over the years. We used to rep, you know, shows you how long I've been doing. I used to rep OGO, you know, this was of course before, before Sanmar got the line and Logomark, you know, before anyone ever heard of them and all sorts of other, uh, you know, big companies through the years. And I, and I kept that going till about 2014 when uh, due to, actually it's kind of an interesting topic there, but it was mostly due to sort of mergers and acquisitions that we, we lost five of our top six lines 
do to do things sort of outside our control. We just poof, they were gone. And, you know, as a rep, you, you mitigate those kind of losses by having seven or eight lines. And if you lose one, okay, you pick up a new one, you build it up, everything's cool. Uh, but in this case, it was really kind of a unique situation losing five of the top six. Mm. Uh, we hung on to a company called Crown Products for uh, a while there. And even we even repped them after EBSCO purchased them. So another we knew another merger and acquisition was about mm. to, to come uh, to fruition as well. So, but we hung on to them and we, we built up some other lines around it, but it was not really developing and we knew we were going to lose crown too. So in 2014, I decided to make a career change and a, uh, a supplier company, an umbrella company called Stromberg brand hired me to be their national sales director. And I did that for five plus years. I uh, had pretty good success over there. And uh, then COVID came and bye-bye Danny basically is how that went that story and uh, mean so umbrellas that, won't protect you from covid well um, <laughs> they might but i would not have anything <laughs> to do with that. Um, but that was march 23rd 2020 so and uh you know i got back from a trip in nashville we were doing a i was doing a, a, a you know one of these hosted buying events out in nashville home didn't even want to get on the plane it was like you know everything was heaving me out and got home and it was just you know the world obviously has not really been the same ever since then but so so that was March 23rd and um, I like to joke that I can now confirm to everybody that uh, looking for a job in the first four weeks of a global pandemic is really not not a great idea you know it's Kind of a difficult time. We were wondering, so we thank were, you. Yeah, yeah. For next I mean, time. <laughs> for the next global pin. The, the people I was talking to were like, hey, damn, man, we're, we're, we're contracting, we're cutting our sales force, we don't know what the future holds, you know, there's yeah. a lot of uncertainty as, as I'm sure you remember. And so in one of these conversations I'm having with a friend of mine, you know, he said, hey, this might be a time to step back and try to create something then, you know, and that was the seed that, that got me to thinking about what I could do to maybe create a business that was relevant in this day and age and, and the new time that we're in and uh, came up with the idea for the soapbox uh, in probably the beginning of April last year, a year ago, it looks like. And then uh, one of my first calls was to a guy named Brett Schaefer, who's uh, my partner in this. And I said, Brett, I got this idea and I want you to be my partner in this thing. And uh, thank God I called him because he's been, uh, you know, uh, super, super valuable to this whole, to this whole equation every day. Uh, and then some could not be doing it without him, frankly. And it was nice because he, I knew, first of all, Brett and I have been friends and, and I knew he had this sort of operational mind and operational experience and background in promo. And I'm slightly more of a sales and marketing guy. So we just kind of put those two things together and, and that's how we got together. So that's how I ended up uh, at the soapbox and worked on that for the last year. And here we are today. Well, a, a true success story. I mean, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, Dan Pickett. Uh, let me tell you, I, I know uh, Hidware's involved in, in soapbox. We were, you know, pretty, pretty early adopters. And um, I, Nick absolutely raves about what you guys have put together. <laughs> um, so I'm really interested and, and excited to sort of bring people through that whole process because what you guys have done have really taken that sort of speed dating um, you know, scenario that, that has sort of come out and, and emerged in our industry. And uh, you've sort of turned it on its head and, you know, in a, at a perfect time uh, where, you know, everything's going digital. You guys jumped on this really quickly and have made this whole speed dating thing, uh, you know, a, a monthly process where you're continually refreshing. I mean, you've literally taken what has already been considered one of the best platforms in the industry and turned it into, something even better. And all the back end stuff that you guys have going on with the app and the dashboard and the schedules and had the profiles and everything that you guys get together with that uh, is absolutely phenomenal. So very well done. Uh, and I, I'm really looking forward to you sharing some of that information with us uh, about how all that came came about. Um, and, you know, is the goal for Soapbox to continue uh, to remain virtual? Uh, you know, or is that something that you plan on changing up in the future? Or, uh, you know, I'm interested in how all of the thought process came to be, because obviously, you know, you, you've created this, this phenomenal thing in a, a digital world, you know, where things are, were very different. And this was very much needed, I think. Thank you. Was there a question in there somewhere? Well, uh, Dan, for starters, 
can you explain to those that don't know what soapbox is like can you give us kind of the the foundation of it or? yeah let's start there <laughs> at the beginning all right and jeff thanks for the nice words though i do appreciate that's all it. yeah i'm excited yeah about it. But, pumped uh, it up <laughs> but no so so the genesis of it um basically comes from my own personal experience as i said five plus years as as a head of a, a supplier sales department and what I did is I, I did a lot of those host, live hosted buying events, you know, uh, from there were three organizations that put them on uh, and they all were, were good. Uh, I got a lot out of them. I thought they were valuable. I thought they were, in fact, innovative. What, 12, 13 years ago when they first started, they were, they were a very, very innovative uh, new concept. And so I got a lot out of them. And so now as I sat there a year ago, knowing that there was going to be no travel, and for, for the foreseeable, and I knew it was a long time. I knew this wasn't going to be a couple of weeks. Uh, I thought it was going to be a long time. And I said, well, how can I extract sort of the, from a business perspective, the most, the most productive elements from those meetings, but they ha it has to translate virtually, right? The first thing you think of when you think of a hosted buying event is where am I going? You know, is it, is it Scottsdale or Park City? You know, I get to go, go to some cool place or whatever. <laughs> uh, and obviously we don't have that. You know, we have your living room or your, you know, your office. You're not going anywhere. Um, so we had to, we, we, we just had to sort of move past that and say, what would motivate somebody to jump onto this platform in the absence of that? In the absence of being able to rub elbows and meet, meet people personally and all that. So, so that was sort of the, the context we were trying to grow this thing in. So yes, we do have a similarity with those platforms in the 20 minute you know, speed dating meetings, mm. as you like to refer to them as. Um, but beyond that, we've we changed the format quite a bit to make it, I think, much more, well, more, more manageable, more convenient, easier to digest. Um, you know, and for, I'll give you one, for example, and we can talk about some of the details further if you like. But one of the format changes was, again, based on my experience. So I used to say, well, what, what's wrong with these things? How could I make them better? Mm -hmm. And one of them was, you know, you had a, a distributor would show up and have to, and, and meet with 38 or 40 suppliers in two and a half days, okay? Um, and gosh, you can get a lot of information out of that, that's for sure. But what can you retain? What can you seriously mm -hmm. retain across the board from those five uh, companies? Uh, other than, you know what? Jeff was a nice guy. Meg's a great guy. Steven, you know, I, I enjoyed spending time with them. Maybe. And, and, and there's a lot to be said. Well, there is a lot to be said for that. Uh, but what we said is really from, from a product, productivity standpoint, we boiled it down to where distributors are only seeing four meetings at each of these events. So you're only meeting with four customers, 20 minute meetings. It's an 80 minutes of content once a month. That's the other, another format change we made, Jeff, you were referring to is, you know, these were big quarterly events that these other companies were putting on. We said, let's let's chop it up into little bite-sized pieces instead of, you know, making it this big, huge thing that you have to, you know, prepare for. Uh, and by the way, that benefits the suppliers too. And we can we can get big into time. that uh, on the other uh, if you want. So anyway, so that's what I mean by these little these format. These these are not little format changes. They're significant format changes that everyone has once they get a chance to look at it. They go. Oh well, yeah, I can do that. I mean, that's that's fine, and it's it's free for distributors, you know. So there's not a lot of there's not a not a buy in there, and that causes certain issues too that we have to kind of address, <laughs> um, you know, because when you when there's no skin in the game, you know, that's that's an issue there, right? So you, you mm -hmm. do have to, you have to consider that, and we, I think we have, but you know, it's not a perfect science. And and by the way, we're learning every day on this thing. I mean, my gosh, every mm -hmm. single time we have an event. You know, we look at each other, Brett and I, and we're just like, well, that was new. You know, that was different. And, <laughs> and so, you know, everything is is growing right now, but we've got three under our belt right now. And it's it's going pretty darn good, I have to say. Yeah, absolutely. And another one coming up. But um, what, what questions do you guys have, particularly about Soapbox then? So my question to you, Dan, like, since you're only doing four suppliers a month, how does that really, I mean, cause you have to think of it from a finance, you have to make money too. I, I mean, I'm assuming like you have to make money too. So we're, we're ripping off our suppliers. Okay. That's what I thought. It's okay. <laughs> well, cause I want to, you know, you, it has to be mutually beneficial, right? You have to make money too. And I think I love the format because I know in the beginning of COVID, I tried to Instead of not the beginning of COVID, because no one wanted to be sold to, but you know, when we started doing all these virtual meetings, 
nobody really wanted to like, I didn't want to just sit there and talk for an hour. I get tired of myself. Like, so I would power up. I have like these power hours with two of my vendors and bring them in. And, and it worked so well. It's because it's, it's changing. It's keeping the, you know, it's not the same person. And if that one 20 minute meeting sucks, it's only 20 minutes. You know what I mean? So then you have two other people coming in and changing it up and it's fresh. So I'm assuming that's what it's like, but I don't know what my question was. I, I think I just want to make sure you're making money. <laughs> I just want to, yeah, I mean, the there's the warrior in me. <laughs> the, supplier, the suppliers are paying us and uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're doing good. You know, we're okay, doing good. just fine. As far as that goes, we're, if anything, we're a little ahead of where we projected we might be. So um, we've got what, what we hoped would happen. So you want to talk about strategy on the supplier side. I can talk about that all day too, because really I, I've always been a supplier. And mm -hmm. I've always been, even as a multi-line rat, I'm, I'm working on behalf of, of suppliers and, and I've always been sort of on the supplier side, but you know, um, these guys, uh, they really, um, they really uh, am, have embraced this, this format. We're giving them, we're giving them 12 meetings, by the way, each, each month. I don't mm -hmm. know if you realize that. Oh but, no. Okay. That's better. So the, supplier, <laughs> the suppliers will see 12 customers. Um, but there's, a, but the distributors are only seeing four. So the, the feedback we hear from uh, our supplier, our paying supplier customers, is the energy level on this on this platform is unbelievable. Because you're, you know, I, I, here's a story, right? So it was new for everybody. Um, after the first one, we, I, you know, I called to some suppliers to get some feedback. How'd it go? What's all about? And one guy who I'm, I'm not going to throw him under the bus, but he says to me, you know, Dan, I don't understand something. I said, What is it? He goes, Well, it was three o'clock. You know, and I'm getting on, I'm getting on a, a call at three o'clock. And, and I say to the, and I say to my, well, this woman who I'm meeting with, you know, how's your day going? She goes, well, it's fine. He goes, well, I mean, you know, you, you having a good time on the sofa. He goes, I don't know. You're my first meeting. And, you know, he, it didn't equate with it. He had forgotten, frankly, is the point of the story that, that he was doing 12, but they were only seeing four. Uh. But we were talking about this the following day. I'm like, hey, dummy, you know, this is what we did here. We, we <laughs> picked this up. So, you know, you've got people that are eager and anxious and, and when they're done, they're not trying to remember, were you the guy with the curly hair or the guy with the beard or were you, you know, who were you? You're only meeting four people, you know, and, and it's a lot easier to just sort of digest from the, from the distributor side of things. So, um, so that's been part of it. And again, since you didn't really ask me a question, I'm not sure if I answered it. No, you did. Cause it's, the, that was the same feedback that I was getting instead of me just doing like a whole hour long pitch. And I, I just, it's so much more, I guess, fun for the distributors too, because they get to, we kind of all play off each other too, but I, I, I if you need a soapbox supplier for apparel, I mean, I, I might know one. <laughs> We're here for you, Meg. All right. We'll have to talk. Dan, <laughs> Dan that, that, uh, that story reminded me, I was at one of these other format events that we've been talking about and I literally made it into meeting 38 of 38 and it was someone I knew very well. They knew me and they were like, oh, thank goodness. And they're like, what do you want to drink? And like this, one of the people left came back with a with a literally a serving tray with drinks and we just spent that 20 minutes just there you go not talking because we were out of energy like it's it's so draining um, and that's, for everybody. that's the thing that's the thing about the you know the, the other formats they're they're great don't get me wrong you know but they're they're expensive and you're you're flying people out to a destination and you're paying for the hotels and, and you're doing all this so you talked about the, the benefit from the supplier standpoint is that you know you're getting the same if not more benefit uh, from those meetings, from the supplier standpoint, but at a fraction of the cost. And Dan, I know it's it's a quarterly situation, right? So the suppliers pay, uh, you know, for a three month time frame, and you can continue to re up, you know, a quarter at a time if you'd like, and uh, whatever that charge is. But ultimately, it, it works out to be much more cost effective for uh, for the supplier and the distributors. They're coming to it for business. You know, they're not going to it for for holiday. You know what I mean? And uh, so at the pro the Profiles that you guys put together require the distributors to come to the the app with uh, is phenomenal. The information that the supplier gets ahead of time for those meetings is great. Um, so, like I said, I mean, you guys have really made uh, that platform what it really could be and should be. So, well, you know, one of the other interesting things that that came out of it was, you know, in in some of these conversations as we were developing this thing and talking to these suppliers. I mean, I we actually sold. I think it was nine, nine supplier spots before our platform was built. Okay. We, we had contracts with suppliers and we didn't even have a platform to show, show them yet. They just loved the idea and bought into it. Now we, we had a goal of launching with 20 
lines. We ended up launching with 31 and we were, we're up to 40 now. Uh, so it's just people are, people are, are coming at us. But one of the, one of the comments that, um, that came up from a few of the suppliers, especially the smaller suppliers was, I can't afford to be out of my office for those four days. Like mm -hmm. you don't think about that. And Jeff, you said, oh, it's a little expensive <clears throat> and it's, you know, it's this, it's that, but it's really, you know, you're, you're having breakfast with somebody at 7 a.m. You're having cocktails with them until about 9 p.m. And then you're maybe 11.30 for you. <laughs> I was going to say nine. Some, yeah. of us are, early. some of us are there to work, okay? So <laughs> but anyway. Well, that's, that's where the work gets done, Dan. That's that is the, where the work gets done. <laughs> I know. Even though we don't remember <laughs> that work, it gets I've, done. <laughs> I've heard that line from people. And, uh, you know, to each his own. That's fine by me. <laughs> But, uh, but the point is, and plus, you, so you're, you're kind of out of pocket, can't even do emails, you can't follow up during those time, those hours. I mean, it's brutal. You know, it's really, really brutal. And so when they heard from us, like it's, it's six hours, one day a month with an hour for lunch in, in the middle of it, they're like, and I don't have to leave my desk. I can come in a little early, get some work done before and after and at lunchtime. And we also did something even small and marginal. We made 10 minute breaks in between the meetings instead of five. And, and that people are like, you know, that's great. I can get that email out. I can, you know, return a quick phone call or whatever it is. So we've, we just try to make it super easy is really what we've tried to do. So an in interest of not making this a complete soapbox infomercial is, you. as you wanted us not to do. Um, and, and we agree. So the topic really is the evolution of the supplier distributor networking channels and, you know, what came first, uh, Meg, what was the, what was the line? The that, pandemic or the soapbox, but I think he answered that already, but already, so you know, it's, it is the evolution. Cause I mean, we went from these, like, let's say it was 40 meetings. I don't know over the course of so many days and it's as a supplier, it is exhausting. we we talked about that. And as a distributor, I, seems like a lot of fun as a distributor. I mean, you get like the spa and all the drinks and everything. It's, it's a lot of fun, but now we're in this new world where at best things are going to be hybrid at best moving forward. And I think to be able to, um, to move forward and to adapt and evolve, you have to have a very good base of what you're doing on the virtual end of it, because you have to be able to, here's the thing, you could have a hybrid situation or you could have a completely virtual situation, but regardless, you have to have that, that base, that platform that you guys are offering that is killing it to be able to, you know, there, there's a lot of things that you can pair off on from this, not just the soapbox, which I think, you know, you might even have a little announcement coming up that is something else that came from this, right? We might. Okay. I don't know if you want to say it or not. You can. Well, <laughs> well I mean, just because this is like, like things evolve constantly and you're not just, I'm sure it wasn't like the goal or maybe it was, but it's, you, you can't be stagnant. You know that, you, you know, otherwise it's. No, I think, you're, I, I think you're, allu you're alluding to our new uh, agreement yeah. with uh, not American your COVID American, fighting umbrella. American <laughs> Solutions for Business yesterday, and uh, so they have they've essentially, you know, we we took it to their management team and we we demoed the site for them, and we've had some back and forth conversations with them, and they, I mean, for all intents and purposes, they're sort of an endorsing our product for their people, and so that has already opened up the floodgates. We've got five or six calls already uh, just this morning from some of their affiliates and all that so we'll we'll work our way through that and that's awesome and so yeah so we we did think that uh, strategically we could uh, approach some of the some of the national account sort of vendor coordinators and see if we could do these kinds of things and we we have done it on a couple occasions this was a bit more of a, a formal announcement i guess than than some of the other ones that we've that we've had and it's very cool we're really it is very cool so, i'm proud of you i've known you for a while and i i I always thought you were just, I just love being around Dan Piggott, you know, I always have the jokes, always have the, I mean, he didn't know who Magic Mike was or mini me, but I mean, I allow some grace. <laughs> we allowed you on the show. <laughs> hey, so Dan, to talk a little bit about that, um, kind of the future evolution of, of how this stuff looks, um, you know, my, my personal opinion is, you know, when these other events, the other formats open back up, they're not going to have a problem selling out. Right. I think they're still going to sell out and I think they're still going to go on. But I also see like, I think the pie and of people has expanded. Right. So, you, you know, do you, do you kind of, is that kind of what you guys are banking on? Do you think that there'll still be, there's actually just more people now that want to go to different things and some people are going to choose one way and the other, or how do you kind of see this evolving? That's an interesting question. I haven't exactly been asked that question in that, in that format exactly here. Um, 
the way I have been answering that question, and I'll come back to, 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 what, to what you're suggesting, Stephen, but basically, so, so if, the, if uh, the pandemic started like March last year and it's already April this year and we're all just getting our shots now, and yes, there's gonna be some, some live events here towards the latter half of this year, but I think, I think most of us would agree that we're still in this thing 75 or 80 percent of on terms mm -hmm. of restricted travel through 2021 i don't know if you would all that's my take on it and so if that ends up being the case that will be the better part of two years living virtually and and conducting business virtually and, and meeting customers virtually and all of the different things that we've been doing on this virtual platform so my contention is it's not going away it will always be a tool in the toolbox and I, I used to joke when it when it first was going on, you know, six months into it, a year into it, it was, you know, now that your grandma's the one that's starting all the Zoom calls in your family, you realize that they're, you know, we've crossed over that that threshold where it's not the 800 pound gorilla in the room anymore. And there's not a lot of, the fear factor is gone from setting up, you know, virtual meetings and doing things virtually. So, so we take all of that into account. Uh, we believe that this will, like I said, it'll, it'll always be a tool in the toolbox. I think there's going to be some people that you know, soapbox. What did I say in the soapbox? Did I say? No, I was, <laughs> oh, I was, the, soapbox. I, <laughs> the toolbox. Maybe I should say soapbox. That's good. I like that. I'll take that and keep it as my own. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Uh, but no, so uh, I, I, I think we're you know we don't have and, and Jeff sort of asked the question earlier but didn't. Um, are <clears> we are we going to morph into you know live events or anything like that? That has not been our plan. Now, we, we actually could envision live events that weren't actual soapbox events, but just networking hangout events and getting people together and, and maybe educational things and um, what have you. But, you know, to do the soapbox as a live event, we do, we not, do not currently have plans to do that. We, we see this as a virtual platform and, and all that. Now, well, logistically, I don't know how you could do what you're doing in a, in a, a in-person thing i mean it would, it would take a month <laughs> <laughs> well we would need you know, take, think about that you know what you're right. don't, don't make my brain explode right now but uh but yeah no so we just we haven't really given it too much thought to be honest with you and we're kind of leaving leaving the live things to those people that that want all that i mean i just can't even imagine the, the logistics of hotels and travel and yada 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 i not really interested in in getting into that business really as far as that goes but i think people are Stephen, are going to go back to those things um uh, is everybody going to go back i don't know you know you you raise an interesting point though Stephen. it's is it a bigger is it a bigger pie now of people i don't know the answer to that either i i guess it is i think it's certainly a bigger pie of people who are willing to do virtual events because that number was zero two years ago and now it's everybody so uh you know, that, that certainly has expanded. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's a good All question. Right. I mean, it's definitely something to think about. And I think it is. I think it is a much bigger mm. piece of the pie now. And I think not everyone is going to want to go back. I know there's a lot of people supplier-wise, reps that are that don't want to go back out on the road or they're afraid to still. And I, that's perfectly fine. Everybody's at a different part in their journey. And regardless, I think that having this as an option, as a solution to and it's not even just a solution that sounds like subpar like this is like the greatest experiment that's like doing it's amazing i love it i love it i love it have, have you thought about how this thing scales and or is that something you're taking sort of as it comes because obviously if you continue to sign you know uh, agreements like the asb thing and you just get a massive influx of distributors participating how do you how do you then manage the schedule so that everybody is getting access um, we do have an answer for that. And the answer is it scales quite nicely. Uh, we have that all kind of drawn up and um, come on aboard is basically what we're saying. We, we can scale it up. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something else, Jeff, is uh, I feel like I can bring this to other industries. Sweet. You know, I've, I've talked awesome. to about my sister is in the uh, fancy, uh, was she kind of flirts and it still was in the fancy food business, right? So she used to make genuine Vermont maple syrup and then got involved in that whole industry. So it's not like your big, huge food companies, but it's more the more regional and local companies and to make specialized mm -hmm. foods. And anyway, they use a whole broker network 
right? Uh, to, to get their foods placed in certain uh, stores and what have you. And I don't know that market at all. Obviously, I can't even, can't even describe it. So obviously, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. But if I can find the right partner in there and partner up with somebody and just use the same concept and use the same. So those are, that's just one of the other ways that we've thought to scale, but it, it, but it scales up within our industry. I think it scales up outside our industry. And so the answer is yes. Uh, thankfully it scales up. Awesome. Yeah. You guys have any other questions regarding the evolution of the supplier distributor network or soapbox? I don't. I'm seeing if there's any questions. Tim Hill said he was actually wearing his soapbox shirt today, which is awesome. <laughs> what Timmy? And Jeff, you ignored the fact that I was like hair flipping and it was a perfect time to like, Meg, your hair looks amazing. You know, <laughs> I know it seems really seamless getting this show up and running and it just happens, but there's actually a lot of shit happening behind the scenes. I actually don't listen to you when you give your <laughs> It's okay. It's all right. You know, yeah. um, do you guys want to go and do our, um, our normal rapid fire then, but we're not doing well, rapid fire today. Yeah, Meg, because of your uh, your uh, very uh, amazing uh, hype video that you put out there, <laughs> I think we're gonna stick with that uh, that theme, right? We're gonna yeah. we're gonna go. With what's what's your best pickup line? Yeah, what is your best pickup line, or the most creative pickup line you guys have? Just to go into, if you didn't see the hype video, I was kind of scrolling through looking for online platforms, and it was like a dating app, and it was it was cute. And then Mr. Dan Pickett came on and gave us his uh, twenty second why you should date him kind of but not really not let, a, let me just put a disclaimer <laughs> out there. if you saw it i'm, I'm really not that creepy to be honest. <laughs> I'm not, I'm to, you look so confused <laughs> i was trying to do some acting and you can see why i'm not an actor now right he was it was really out of his element but i was proud of him so thank Steven, you even you and i weren't even in the in the video we were supposed well, to be but you know the phone our own fault. incorrectly and you know so you, Jeff, you could see you you were creative yeah. you were yeah. creative and steven was engaging but whatever. Anyway, all right. So pick up lines. All right, you guys ready? All right, uh, Jeff, I'm gonna need you to actually back up like three feet for a second, just so I can uh, see what you're wearing. Oh, oh. Um, Do you have pants on? Hold on first. Let's, you, you are oh, wearing yeah, okay, pants on. <laughs> Keep going a little bit more. I need to see your pants. I need to see your pants. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You wearing your space pants? I'm not wearing space pants. I'm wearing oh, short. Because your ass is out of this world. Oh, Woo! is that your pick up line? Wow. That was a pretty good one. I'll take it. All right. All right. Uh, I don't know why you needed to see the pants for that joke, but I'm just, I mean, you just wanted to see it. You I mean, I actually, I played right into it because I showed her my ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, just uh, like Dan, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. I don't use pickup lines. Uh, and even when I was single, I don't believe I ever used pickup lines, but uh, we'll just go with, uh, hey, I'm, I'm researching important dates in history. Would you like to be mine? No. <laughs> That's why I don't use pickup lines. <laughs> well, All right, Dan, what's yours? Well, similar to Jeff, I haven't uh, I haven't used one in a long time, maybe ever, but uh, I like this one. Um, well, I'm here. What are your other two wishes? That's a good one. Does that work? That was good. Okay. All right, Stephen. Um. If you're a transformer, you'd be Optimus Fine. <laughs> fine. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say I was gonna say if you were a fruit, you'd be a fine apple, but yeah, know. I like that too. Yeah. That's good. Mm. Fair enough. <laughs> I missed the reference, Stephen. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> hey, hey Dan, what's your favorite superhero movie? <laughs> <laughs> um I honestly don't even know. Like, I I don't know. All right. So listen, uh, <laughs> your business partner, Brett Schaefer chimed in and he said that uh, the, the hype video that Meg put together is seriously making him rethink his choice in business partner. Uh, understandably, uh, understandably. Yes, I have, a, I have a reply to that. Tough shit. <laughs> you're in it now, buddy. <laughs> Too late. You're in it. Too late. You're in it. All right. So listen, uh, hopefully you found some value in this show today. I, I think uh, you guys should definitely check out uh, the promo soapbox. Uh, reach out to Dan or Brett for that. Um, but this wonderful broadcast was brought to you today by promoshow.com. And, you know, they've, they've started with their, their theme trade shows again, and they've got one coming up on April 27th that is USA made themed. And uh, so essentially, if you're looking for some USA made products, you should definitely be checking them out. Um, it's a virtual event held.
held on Tuesday, April 27th from 11 to 3 Eastern time. Distributors can register by clicking on the USA made banner at promoshow.com and suppliers can reach out to sales at promo show. Uh, if they, if you, if you need help reserving a booth, uh, there's going to be education, entertainment, uh, and, and tons of giveaways throughout the day. Uh, so be sure to check them out on April 27th from 11 to 3 Eastern. Um, go to promoshow.com and click on the USA Made banner to register. And suppliers email uh, sales at promocorner.com uh, if you're interested in getting that booth. Uh, so with that being said, I uh, appreciate you guys uh, being on with us today. Meg, uh, it was good talking with you. Uh, wonderful hair. Wonderful hair. I'll give you the compliment now. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, good to talk with you. Dan, thank you so much for joining us, man. It was fun. Was Your hair is it. nice too, Dan. Thank you. Thanks, it, thanks it for is, having man. me on. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Promo Corner's Industry Insider. For more great content from industry thought leaders, including podcasts, blogs, and videos, visit promocorner.com.